In this video, we're going to introduce the spectrum. Now, the spectrum is a way of representing signals as a function of the frequencies that are present in those signals. Our objectives are to define a representation of an arbitrary or a general signal in terms of a sum of sinusoids. We're not going to cover how to find the coefficients of that sum. That's material for later. But once we have a signal represented as a sum of sinusoids, we can define the spectrum of that signal based on the amplitudes and phases and frequencies of the sinusoids that make up the signal. So it turns out that any signal x of t can be described on a limited interval from 0 to capital T, for example, using a sum of sinusoids. So that means I can write any signal x of t as a0 plus a1 times cosine 2 pi f1 t plus phi1 plus a2 cosine 2 pi f2 t plus phi2, and so on, up to a n cosine 2 pi f n t plus phi n. I can write this using some notation as a0 plus a sum from k equals 0 to capital N of a sub k cosine 2 pi f k t plus phi k. Now to represent an arbitrary signal, it may require n be somewhat large, but nevertheless, it's possible to almost exactly describe any signal in this form. Now subsequent material will discuss how to find a k, f k, and phi k. Now if we look at the left-hand side of this equation and the right-hand side of this equation, on the left-hand side we have a signal x of t, and we're writing it explicitly as a function of t, so this signal is varying with time. On the right-hand side, we have a series of signals that also vary with time, these cosines, but since I know they're cosines, there's only a few parameters that matter. The amplitudes, the ak's, the frequencies, and the phases. So on the right-hand side, I can look at the amplitudes and phases as a function of the frequencies, fk. And that tells me how this signal is described with respect to frequency. We define that to be the spectrum x of f. And the spectrum uses the amplitudes and phases to represent x of t as a function of the frequencies that are present in x of t. And we're going to do a simple example to begin. We'll let x of t be a times cosine of 2 pi f naught t plus phi. And I want to graph the spectrum x of f. To do this, we're going to decompose x of t using the Euler expansion as a over 2 e to the j quantity 2 pi f naught t plus phi 0 plus a over 2 e to the minus j 2 pi f naught t plus phi. And I can factor out the phase terms to write this as a over 2 e to the j phi times e to the j 2 pi f naught t plus a over 2 e to the minus j phi times e to the minus j 2 pi f naught t. I have two terms at different frequencies. One is at frequency f naught. The other is at frequency minus f naught. And at f naught, I have a complex amplitude of a over 2 e to the j phi, while at minus f naught, I have a complex amplitude of a over 2 e to the minus j phi. So I can graph my signal as a function of time, like I've done up here in the top, and we know that it has amplitude a, so it goes between plus and minus a, and there's a frequency and a phase shift here that we could measure. But if I want to represent the frequencies that are in this signal, I can do that using the spectrum x of f. And what we see is that as a function of frequency, I only have contributions at two frequencies, at f naught and minus f naught. At f naught, I have a over 2 e to the j phi, whereas at minus f naught, I have a over 2 e to the minus j phi. Now, a lot of times, we're not interested in the phase because we're more concerned with how the energy of a signal is distributed with respect to frequency. And in that case, it's useful to define something called the magnitude spectrum. And the magnitude spectrum just is plotting the magnitude of these coefficients. So in this particular case, I could take the magnitude, and that's going to get rid of the e to the j phi and e to the minus j phi terms. And so the magnitude spectrum for x of f is a over 2 at f naught and a over 2 at minus f naught. 
Recall that I said any x of t could be represented on an interval from 0 to cap t as a sum of capital N cosines with amplitudes ak and frequencies fk and phases vk. So if we take these cosines and we apply the Euler decomposition to the cosine again, just like we did in the single cosine example, we can write this as a0 plus the sum from k equals 1 to capital N of ak over 2 e to the j phi k plus ak over 2 e to the minus j phi k times e to the minus j 2 pi fkt. Well, we'll define lowercase a0 and lowercase ak based on these constants that are in our expression. And if I define a lowercase a0 to be uppercase a0 and lowercase ak to be uppercase ak divided by 2 e to the j phi k, then I can rewrite this signal x of t in terms of its frequency components at frequencies fk and the coefficients are complex numbers ak. Now you can see because of the way the Euler expansion works, we're writing cosine of theta is e to the j theta plus e to the minus j theta over 2, that the coefficients at negative frequencies are the complex conjugate of the coefficient at the positive frequencies. That's why we've written ak complex conjugate in front of the e to the minus j 2 pi fk terms. So we can sketch the spectrum of the signal to represent it as a function of frequency. We see that we have components at frequencies f1, f2, fn, and this, of course, is at frequency 0. And there we have amplitude a0. And at f sub k, we have complex amplitude ak. At the negative frequencies, the complex amplitudes are the conjugates of those at the corresponding positive frequencies. So this is our spectrum. It shows us how this signal is described as a function of frequency. This is a section of about 45 milliseconds of a saxophone playing a concert A. And I've displayed the magnitude spectrum on the right-hand side. And I've found this magnitude spectrum using the discrete Fourier transform and the computer, a topic that will be discussed in a later series of videos. There's a set of frequencies that are used to represent this signal. And it turns out that the dominant one, or the largest amplitude one, is at 440 hertz. And then there are additional components at integer multiples of that. So we have something at 880, at 1320, and so on. You see that these are regularly spaced. And we can see the relative amplitudes of these different components in the spectrum. For example, that the amplitude of the 1320 hertz component is larger than the amplitude of the 880 hertz component. So the fact that there are these specific frequencies present in this signal and their relative amplitudes be very difficult to see from this time domain description. But the spectrum gives us that kind of insight. So it's a very useful way of interpreting signals. We'll discuss in later videos how to represent the signal x of t as a sum of sinusoids. But for now, we're going to assume that we're given a representation of x of t as a sum of sinusoids, and our task will be to find the spectrum. Here's an example where I'm told that x of t is 3 plus 2 cosine 20 pi t plus pi over 3 plus cosine of 30 pi t minus pi over 4. And I want to find the spectrum and graph it. Well, anytime you have a signal represented as a sum of cosines like this, you can use the Euler decomposition for the cosine to write it as a sum of positive and negative frequency components, and that's where you get your spectrum. So we'll rewrite x of t as 3 plus 2 over 2 e to the j pi over 3. So that takes care of the amplitude out front the factor of one half in the Euler decomposition of the cosine, and then the phase pi over 3 times e to the j 2 pi times 10 t. So I've pulled out the 10 from 20 pi, and then we'll have the term that corresponds to that at the negative frequency minus 10. We have one more term. We have a cosine with amplitude 1 and phase minus pi over 4. 
and factoring 30 pi into 2 pi times 15, we see that the frequency of this cosine is 15 hertz. So this term, using the Euler expansion, results in 1 half e to the minus j pi over 4 e to the j 2 pi 15 t plus 1 half e to the j pi over 4 e to the minus j 2 pi 15 t. Now that I've written it in this form, I can directly identify the terms in the spectrum. So I'm going to compare the expression I've written here to the general case, x of t being lowercase a0 plus the sum from k equals 1 to capital N, ak e to the j 2 pi fkt plus ak conjugate e to the minus j 2 pi fkt. And you can see right away that there's only two terms in my example here because there were two cosines. So capital N is equal to 2 and a0 is a constant term, so that's 3. And then a1 is what's multiplying e to the j 2 pi f1 t, and that's 2 over 2 e to the j pi over 3 of a1 complex conjugate. And at the second frequency of 15 hertz, I have a2 being 1 half e to the minus j pi over 4. And then, of course, a2 conjugate is associated with frequency minus 15. So if we sketch a graph of this spectrum, we're going to have 3 at frequency 0. That's my a0 term. And then a1, which is just e to the j pi over 3, is at 10 hertz. a2 is at 15 hertz, and that'll be 1 half e to the minus j pi over 4. And then at the negative frequencies, I have the conjugates of the terms at the positive frequencies.